just like you hear real estate agents talking about location, 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 you'll often hear us talk about context, context, context. It is unfortunately very frequently overlooked. One of the greatest things about the Bible that we possess is that the books have been broken down for us into chapters and verses. One of the greatest disadvantages about the Bibles that we possess is that it's broken down into chapters and verses. There's not the way the books were written. And it's extremely easy for somebody to take a particular verse in isolation, and it may only be half of a sentence, and build a teaching around that one particular verse. And in some situations, even though the context may not change one's analysis of a particular statement, it gives a richness to it that is lost if the context is not viewed and understood. Let me give you an example. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the beginning of the chapter says this, Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw nigh, of which you say, I have no pleasure in them. Remember God while you're young. Don't just wait till you're old. It's a great statement in and of itself. But beginning with the very next verse, all the way down through at least verse number, verse number 7, it's a very poetic description of one who is advanced in age. And this is what it says. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Why? You need to do that, verse 2 and following, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent, the grinders cease because they are few. Those who look through the windows are dimmed. The doors on the street are shut when the sound of the grinding is low and one rises up at the sound of the bird and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid of what is high there are terrors in the way. The almond tree blossoms. The grasshopper drags itself along because it's heavy. Desire fails because man is going to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. It continues. But you get the point. The grinders are, are few. Teeth not so prevalent necessarily in old age. Those who are bent over, can't really walk as straight as I once could. It's very, very poetic or a prose-filled way of describing old age. And what the writer has said, when you take a look at what happens towards the end of life, the way that things are not what they used to be, the energy, the, the vigor of life, is something that's dwindled. So remember God while you're young. Establish those principles early. Recently, my quartet had a chance to go and sing at the very lavish opening of a, of a new assisted living facility. We sang for residents for a little over two and a half hours. Sometimes one individual here or there, sometimes a small group. And we sang uh, more than once for a gentleman because it was requested who had grown up singing in a quartet himself with two of his brothers and his father. He couldn't do that anymore. However, with some of the songs that we sang with which he was familiar, here's a gentleman who actually blends in harmony in several notes in those songs. We sang for a lady who had been a professor, a music educator individual with, with tremendous degrees and knowledge that was utilized in the training of young people for years. And later in life, she had advanced Parkinson's disease that actually took her voice. The first song we sang, you could see the, the gleam in her eyes. The second song, it broke into a smile. She couldn't talk, but she clapped for us very vigorously. Later on, there was a, a gentleman that told the director of the facility, because we sang to a lady that had, had been, or actually is, in the last stages of Alzheimer's. Her husband was there with her, and when he actually came back, we saw him come back through and leave, but he talked to the director, actually mentioned to us that he said 
that singing it to both of them, especially to his wife, but to him as well, was one of the most memorable events he could remember. There's a lady that actually showed us some of the paintings that she had, had done over the years and, and the, the still life. She loved flowers. And I made a comment to the rest of the quartet that within the, the walls of this facility and other facilities like it around this state and around the country, there is a wealth of knowledge and wisdom and experience and expertise that is unfathomable boggles the mind is beyond imagination and yet we live in a culture where to a large degree that kind of knowledge that kind of experience that kind of wisdom is something has not been utilized by a younger generation and that's very much to our detriment the next time you have a chance to spend some time with somebody whose life at the end of their life whose life has been overrun with one kind of illness or another that may have taken their voice, may have eroded their memory, may have stopped their mobility. Find out what you can about their background and their life and be enriched by the few moments that you have together. Humanity is something that is lost sight of what is most important in life. Again, the beginning of this chapter. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Set your priorities on things that are significant and eternal now and be able to pass those things on. Don't just leave a legacy. Inspire the next generation. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.